So I'm going to formally introduce us and welcome us all to the organizer facilitator Q&A session. Um, so um, we're going to, I think in terms of like a little bit of a layout, a game plan of what we have here, um, we'll start with a little check-in just to say how you're doing, say hello. Um, and then, you know, if you want to share any inspirations, um, just a quick hello. Uh, then we'll move into a little overview of what the organizer facilitator facilitator track is about. Um, Tom and I and Doreen will uh, will just kick it back and forth between each other here. Um, and we'll go over some important notes and give you a detailed description of how the track works. And then we'll take questions. Um, and just as a review of the team here, Tom Bond is here, uh, creator of the course. Uh, you have Doreen Poulon over here, and she's also part of the course team. Uh, she's been helping in various different respects, and so uh, a very integral part of the course. And myself, Antonio, and Ms. you probably have heard from me at some point, so I also help run things around here. So um, I think with all that being said, maybe we can just move into a little saying hello, a little checking in uh, before we move into the overview. So if you want to say hi, you can just uh, probably unmute yourself or raise your hand. Yeah, Marta. Uh, I, I have a little bit of urgency to check in because I want to go off camera, but I wanted you to see my face. My husband is working while I'm having this session and apparently we are in an Airbnb with very limited uh, bandwidth. So we are interfering with each other. So that's why I will go off camera. But he has a break right now. So I wanted to get the checking done. Yeah. And otherwise, um, well, I'm excited to hear what how the facilitator stuff is working from the other side i already saw it as a participant in groups and i have a few questions and i'm eager to see how those questions will be answered and this is all about growing and contributing yeah i think that's the major two pieces for me growing and contributing thank you and i do go off camera sorry about that yeah <laughs> but i'm here totally here yeah sweet oh, great to see you thanks for joining us martha mm -hmm. hello i'm Lori in idaho Hey. And um, I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm feeling a little harried, I guess. Um, a lot of chaotic things going on in my family with uh, multiple surgeries and um, a death. And so it's nice to leave that behind um, for, for a little while for something that I love talking about. So. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. I could check in. Um, Tom here. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I'm. Well, we were just talking, you know, before this started, and we we're like, this is the third year, right? Like, th three years. Like, wow. <laughs> that really went fast. And what was really cool is so many people are repeating, you know, because you always wonder, well, is it working? You know, is it not working? And so many folks, uh, are doing it year after year. And so that's always a good sign, you know, that if, if people are repeating what they're doing, it must be helping, it must be working. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm happy about that. It's like, it just sunk in like that this is really working. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and really happy to talk to you about what that even means, you know, like what people are going through, what, what we've like, kind of how we're looking at the whole situation, um, you know, in the context of the Compassion Course community 
and um, yeah, and just as individuals, all of us, what you know, our partnership is. So like that. Thanks. Yeah, I'll check in also. I think uh, on a similar note as Tom, I think this is the third time now of uh, having the organizer facilitator track happening and every year uh, hearing from both sides of the organizer facilitators and the participants is um, pretty inspiring to say the least. So I'm really happy to be back here, uh, especially you know at this point of starting off and before we even launch everything um yeah just kind of like touching base with people it's a a really special time for me so really really happy to be here so that's me thanks i can do a quick check-in and I, I'm sitting here just noticing how much appreciation I have for people who are open to being organizer facilitators because it brings that sense of community to a wider group of people without it having to be our responsibility. So I'm really grateful that, uh, that we're able to do that because I think community and support are, are key to uh, integrating the concepts of nonviolent communication. So thank you for being here. Hi, this is Mike. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm in the right place. I'm thinking about actually taking the course, but I was curious about afterwards. So I guess I'm here now just to understand it better. And that's and I'm kind of working in the background. That's why I have the camera off. So I'm going to be listening mostly. I'm complete. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Mars, and I'm relatively new to nonviolent communication. Um, yeah, I just want to do a quick check-in and say hi, and I'll also mostly be listening. Um, so thanks. Thank you. My name is Laura Lee. I'm calling in from New Brunswick, Canada. I have done the compassion course for the last year. And I appreciate the opportunity to be in a practice group. It gives me a understanding of what the other individuals, how they're, you know, integrating NVC, what their challenges are. And I really want to get a better sense of that so that I can work outside of, you know, outside and be able to help people who are not necessarily in NBC, but yet see the challenges that we all have in integrating, you know, nonviolent communication into just part of being human. So I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to address what role we play in that whole dynamic, um, especially in our relationship. Um, uh, kind of the, you know, this kind of combination of oversight, uh, support, like how do you make it all, you know, kind of work. Um, a lot of that comes from having a shared vision of what it is we're up to. And um, in the, I'm going to just say this as quickly as I can, because I think it's important as facilitators to be able to kind of see this. And that is that we learn this work um, kind of in increments. And the first one, the first increment uh, is to find out that this exists. <laughs> Oddly enough, you just have to go, oh, there's this thing. It's called the compassion course. And so that's the first part. And then the next part is to start to understand the basis of the course, which is, oddly enough, simply being able to see feelings and needs, to be able to see the energies of life, to understand what they are and recognize them and even put words to them. Um, understanding what we mean and, and actually experience feelings and needs and then um, 
so we can we see them we can articulate them and then comes the real challenging part which is we come face to face with our relationship to them which is different than the one that is kind of required for us to have to have a rich working relationship with this new understanding of feelings and needs and that's really what the course is about it's about looking at these you know carrying us through all these different increments right the oh it's there oh this is what feelings and needs are oh this is the words we use to to you know talk about them i can start to talk about them and i i understand them so i could start to be empathic right and then i can start to talk to other people with a reference to this i can talk to myself in reference to this and then i can start having a relationship on a daily basis uh, that's with life. I have a new reference point now that I can use over and over again. Uh, and that gives me more choice than I've ever had before. And then we start kind of just looking at the inventory of what is it that we do in life? How do we argue? How do we apologize? How do we yell? How do we respond to people yelling? How do we make agreements or all these different things come later in the course, right? And I, I, many of you I'm, have taken it, right? So you're, I'm imagining you see this. Um, and so that's the thing we're guiding people through all the time. And it's fun to have this kind of perspective because you can, you can start to really help people <laughs> because they'll say, I, you know, I do this exercise, but it just doesn't work. I know the need, but it doesn't matter. And then we can understand, well, okay, well, there's a difference between intellectually knowing the need and really connecting to the need. Our relationship to the need, right? Uh, so anyway, so all that is part of, as we go through the year, uh, you know, we're gonna be paying attention to how is it that we can help people understand where they're at and what are the things that we can do to help people develop a working relationship with this work. And that's our goal, to get people over the line. That's why it's a whole year long. And when I say over the line, I mean that you can use this on a daily basis and it works. And you want to do it again and again naturally because it's making your life better. So there's a pretty high degree uh, of skill there, you know, before you get to that place. And that's another part of what we do. We keep each other company on that sometimes really long journey before we get into that really wonderful place of being over the line. And so that's why I love practice groups um, because we just, you know, if you wanna go far, go together. And so that's really happening now um, in the course. I think I'm done, thank you. Yeah. Can I add just a, a, something there, Tom? And it's just that it's not only about getting your needs met, but it also helps you if you're not able to get your need, needs met in the way that you desire it. Like this is a full practical use of needs awareness, right? Yes. When your life is working, when your life's not working. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's designed it's always to, there to under, turn to. Yeah, under all conditions. It's a, an all weather affair. So I don't know, do you want to get into the content, like what it is we're trying to, like yeah. all the different aspects we provide th along the way, like what's the the facility that we, we provide and then what do we operate inside as a as a group? And yeah. by the way, it, it is, we do ask, I just want to put this right up front. We do ask that you have completed the course at least once uh, in order to be an organizer facilitator. You don't need to have a, a certificate of completion. That's like a whole other level of doing a course. Um, but we do ask that you will, that you have done it once. And the reason we do that is so you know what you're asking people to do. You know what you've, you've already been through the course. So you know what's at least have a really good idea of what you're agreeing to. Otherwise, you might not, you might not. And I would hate to, 
find that out too late, right? After your group has already started. So that's why we put that out there. Um, we just ask, you don't have to be an expert or anything like that. You know, you just need to know what it is. I've kind of been there. Um, Maybe we should start to talk about. Um, maybe we'll switch over to the overview. I think of yeah. the OF track. Yeah, and how it rolls out right yeah. as the year progresses too. Like, yeah, I think all the way out. Yeah. The funny thing, yes, a lot of this will be found on our website. So um, I'll probably do a brief, maybe a few minutes description of what it is, how it works, how, how, you know, we present it, how it shows up for participants out there. So again, let's just start with like the first thing. Yes, this is for Compassion Course alumni. So if you've taken the course, um, you can join the organizer facilitator track. And what is the organizer facilitator track? So it is a leadership opportunity where you can either organize a group of people who want to practice a course together um, and or you can facilitate that group. Um, now, one thing to kind of like also just have maybe some clarity about facilitating and organizing is different than training. Uh, the training, the, the, the teaching, if you will, happens throughout, through the course itself, right? Meaning the weekly messages that come from the compassion course is how the teaching happens. And so in a way, it takes the weight off of you having to do the teaching and training um, so that you're there to help facilitate the process of practicing and helping people integrate this. So in a way, that's why we give the option that you can either organize a group or facilitate it or do both, um, but not doing the necessarily the, the training teaching part. Um, that part is probably really important to, to stress in a way. Well, it's what keeps us as a single a community with a, with a shared understanding of what we're up to and that also allows us to really support one another uh, very specifically so yeah um i think maybe we can move into <clears throat> another important thing we have this thing called the certificate of completion um <clears throat> which is in its most basic form it's an observation, it's information that lets us know that you have completed the course. A certificate of completion is something that you sign up for and you submit weekly journal entries to show that you have done the work in the compassion course. Now that <clears throat> we ask for a certificate of completion if you want to be a mentor. We don't ask for that if you're gonna be an organizer facilitator. Like Tom said, and like I said, the only thing that we ask for is that that we ask for is that you have been an alumni, that you have taken the course at least once before. Or let's say that you're about to finish it this coming uh, June. You're eligible to be an organizer facilitator. And um, I mean, I think it's something to just put out. It strongly suggested that you've done the course at least within the within the last year or two, so that you can be up to date on the material. Um, as opposed to, you know, trying to remember it um, and just picking up as a course goes along. Um, but that is also the other thing that I wanted to put out here is that in a way, what you're doing to move into like what you're doing here, um, when we say you're not teaching, you're not training, what are you doing? Well, the course has weekly exercises. There's practices that we ask people to complete. Um, and over the years, just to put it out there, we have found that it's really hard, if not impossible to do the course on your own. Um, and for a while there, we were doing that. But when we got up to the 10 year mark, we realized we have a community of thousands of people all over the world. Um, it spans about, I think we, we average about 30,000 people who have taken the course at this point. And so when you take that into account, that's that's a large that's a large part of the community that could use support to actually integrate the course and and get help in doing the practices. So that's the main focus of what an organizer facilitator does with their practice groups. It's help people to connect, to practice, to integrate the materials of the course. And and again, as 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 an organizer facilitator, 
in a way, right? That's what you're there to help facilitate that process of what the course is trying to teach along with some practice with <clears throat> other people um, around those practice, around the exercises. If I could just, just say why we pay so much attention to this um, is <clears throat> because um, there are, I don't know, thousands of ways you could teach needs awareness. Like one of them, <clears throat> excuse me, was nonviolent communication, right? That M Marshall came up with using language model, uh, things like that. Uh, and so if you go out into the world, um, there's so many, there are many different ways, so many different ways to learn that it can actually make it difficult to draw a straight line through everything to get where you want to go, which is to me over the line, right? Like into a real competence using a daily mode. Um, and so what we found out, and I was a professional trainer before I even learned about or met Marshall. Uh, and so I love training. I love putting things in a certain order and paying attention to certain aspects uh, of the learning process um, that help us learn as quickly and as effectively and permanently as possible. And that's what the course is. And so that comes from a lot of years of, of training, but then also training people in what I call needs awareness, which is really the basis of nonviolent communication. Um, so that's what the course does. It actually we figured it, you know, kind of, it only took, you know, 11 years, but it got done. And that is that, um, we have, and you know, the feedback is there. It's a nice sequence for people to really get into it. And if we're all doing the same sequence together, we become an incredibly powerful community as opposed to, well, I'm doing this over here and you're doing that over there. And well, I heard this. Well, no, I heard that. And you know, it's, it, it's just different. This is a, there's not a lot of controversy in this community. We're just all heading for the same place. And that is, we're all just trying to get to, you know, to, to really become more compassionate individuals, period. <laughs> Right. And, and to really learn to understand and function off of this amazing thing that Marshall came up with, which is the awareness of needs and how profound they are and what that word really <laughs> encapsulates. It's life, right? It's pretty amazing. And so, yeah, so kind of like that. So that's why we're like so nuts about the course being like, ah, oh, it's gotta be, you know, we really wanna stick to the course. Um, and it's because it works, that's why. And it is getting, it's not like we're never gonna change it. You know, there's always incremental change. Uh, but the, the basic uh, methodology and sequence and, and content um, at this point is working, it's functioning. I think our big challenge now is to be more democratic and to help this uh, become more owned by the community. And that's exactly why we have this program. Just I wanna, yeah, I'd love to be able to die and have this just rocking and rolling without me. Or you got something? Yeah, I just have a quick comment. I love it when people sort of invent new words. It's just sort of a, a delight to see that creativity. And I'm still thinking about that word that Tom used, encapsoids. I'm like, great word. <laughs> I don't think it is a word. Maybe it is, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah. So I think along the lines of what, of you know, where Tom just left off, in terms of like, I guess you could say the format of the group, the format of the group is to follow the course. Meaning, you know, right now we're at week 45, no, wait, 43, I think. So if you take that, for example, um, right now, practice groups that are happening are all following week 43. And from, and 
right? So they're following the curriculum of the course. And the reason for that, the reason that we ask all groups to kind of like stay um, with how the course is delivered in, the, in that chronological order is so that if you imagine someone jumping on to a practice group at this point, and they're following the course because that's the that's the agreement, right? That when when someone joins a a, a group, um, you know, as an as an organizer facilitator, as an OF, um, you you want to check in, like, have you been following the course? Because that's what's going to help to see if the if the group can actually move together. Um, but again, going back to this idea, so that's one of the things, right? The reason that so in you, other words, you can join a group. The, for way at any time, right? And, you know, right, right. And the participant has to keep up with the course themselves. <clears throat> right. Is the other part of it. Um, so both things kind of like check out, meaning like the group is following the chronological order of the, of the course, and so are the participants who are joining the group. Right. And that's important, by the way. If you have people in the group who are not following the course and just showing up. That's a whole different game. <laughs> um, now, in terms of addressing that, we're going to get to that because that's one of the things that you would probably want to ask us. How do I deal with something like this when this shows up in the group? So just hold on there. We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. Um, just to wrap up here, just some some overview of the of the of the organizer facilitator track. I think another important aspect here is oh, wait. Uh, another important aspect here um, money uh, there's an exchange that's happening here uh, there's there's work and service being delivered and so we think that you know charging um, for the you know the service and work that you're providing that kind of you know, that might be a nice little balance there. So like we have mentioned on the website, um, if you charge anywhere between, let's say 15 to $25 per session. Um, and look, there are different models. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that comes, let's get into some of the things that come with joining the track, you will join, you have the ability to join a, a chat group that is just for organizer facilitators. And in that chat group, uh, you can discuss questions like this. How are you pricing your group? How are you receiving payments? Um, do you have a website that you have people sign up on? There's a lot of like, kind of like technical and logistical questions that it's great to actually get feedback from people who are doing the program and doing the track. And so you have the opportunity and you're invited to join a private chat group that's just for organizer facilitators when you are in the, in the program. Um, that's, that's one thing. Um, and then, well, the other thing, and I'll finish off with this and then we'll get into like more of like quote, the, the benefits that come with joining the track, if you will. Um, so, um, again, we're asking that everybody, uh, so there's a $300 fee to join the organizer facilitator track. Uh, now what comes along with that also, by the way, we talked about the private chat group. Uh, there are also going to be monthly two hour meetings uh, with Tom and I'll be there. Doreen will be there and all the other organizer facilitators will be there. And that's where we discuss questions, uh, troubles, uh, celebrations. And what we also do in those meetings is that we preview the upcoming weeks because we come up with an idea of how to turn the upcoming weeks and the exercises in those weeks into group exercises so that you kind of get an idea of how to uh, format the group, how to get an idea, to give you an idea of how to format the exercises when you are doing group sessions. Um, so we kind of give an overview of how to format your group sessions. There's that. So there's a meetings and there's a lot to talk about in the meetings are two hours long and we can probably talk more about that. And then you also uh, have the opportunity to list your group in the directory. So we have a directory of all the practice groups that are being hosted. And that's where participants who are in the course go to find a group. Uh, you can list the time 
the time zone that you're doing it at, right? Because that helps people geographically know if this group works for them. Uh, the cost, if there's a cost and where they can go to get more information. So there's things like that. And I, I'll pull that up in a moment um, as we get more into um, breaking things down. But anyways, that's kind of like the, I think the general overview of most of what the track uh, comes with. Um, so may I, yeah, I just want to yeah. kind of recap. Yeah, please. So the, the, the recipe, right, for this whole situation is that what we're trying to provide is the course, but then also some guidance and training for all of the OFs so that two things happen. Number one, we are supporting you and you're getting better. <laughs> and so we're creating a community that's good at what we do. And I think that's really important for a community, uh, especially like ours. And so, it, you know, there, like there are certain times, for example, in this process where um, there are really challenges, like the, the challenge level really goes up at certain times, like when we're working with anger, right? So it's important for us to be able to know when those times are and pay attention to these things. And also, again, to not just, to, to develop an, a, like a perspective that allows us to troubleshoot where somebody is if they're having difficulty. And that goes back to what I was talking about before, to be able to recognize the different increments and levels that we function on as we are, or, you know, that we move through as we're integrating the work. And so we're paying attention to that all the time as a community, right? We're like this, we're a partnership. We're, we're out here. We have an agreement, right? To help people through the course. Um, and then you have an agreement with the folks you're helping through the course. And so that's something I love about this, by the way. This whole thing, the whole, our whole ecology here, our ecosystem runs on agreements and observations. There's no, we're really doing our best to stay inside of what it is we value. And right, that is that, first of all, we wanna respect people's ability to make their own decisions, but we also wanna provide uh, information to help them do that. And we don't wanna provide analysis, we wanna provide information. And that's what this, the COC is, for example, the Certificate of Completion. That's information. It means, it means you really hit it hard for a year. Um, I mean, to do a COC is a pretty big, at least in my mind, is be a pretty big deal. And so, it, but it's an observation. We're not saying you did a, a good job. We're not even giving you a title. We're just saying you did this thing. You completed the course and you did all the exercises in it. Um, so that's an observation that people can see. And so, yeah, we want that. So we're providing the information. The other thing we're doing is we're providing con, you know, like a network, uh, whether it's with other organizer facilitators who, by the way, there are some super experienced, uh, and, uh, in, like really super competent people in the community. So this community is becoming like this major, major brain trust slash heart trust uh, of people that uh, can help one another. So uh, we provide that. Uh, so there's also, I, you know, we talked about, we make, uh, we're setting provision so that you can be found <laughs> on in the community. Uh, it's went through the directory. Um, yeah, so that's what we want to provide. So we're providing the course, a lot of the frameworks, but not necessarily the nitty gritty details. You get to do that. Like, so look, some groups are free. Some groups are $25, you know, every week or they meet every other week or they, some I think even meet once a month. Um, so that's all totally up to you as an organizer facilitator, as long as you stay to the agreement, which is you're gonna do the course in the order that the course is rolling out. So how do you do that? How much you charge, you don't charge, how many times, how many hours, what days, 
all that stuff, you're your own boss. And then we take that information and give it to the community. So we're, we're setting up the, the, uh, the network, we're giving the information and ultimately the support in those meetings, which become very important uh, throughout the year, those OF meetings. Yeah. I think that, yeah. Yeah, I think before we turn it over to all of you for questions, I think in terms of like, you know, when problems arise in groups, when you have um, issues, someone's not keeping up with the course, um, or you're maybe just having possibly conflict show up, uh, anything that shows up in, in, in the group context, those are topics and those are things that we discuss during the monthly two-hour organizer facilitator meetings. And that's, that's the place where we address questions like that, um, along with, as I mentioned, um, previewing the upcoming weeks. But the, this, what we're trying to generate and cultivate on those meetings is a sense of community support of how are we supporting each other. Um, and as you can imagine, someone, you know, Tom has been doing groups for a pretty long time. So, um, you know, when you ask questions, we're going to be able to provide answers from the experience that Tom has of doing this for, you know, about 20 years, even myself and Doreen have been doing this for a while. And so you'll get answers, you know, in a very professional respect of, you know, how to address different scenarios that are coming up in your group. Um, and we've done things in our meetings, uh, role plays, we've done exercise uh, demos so that you can get an idea of how to even do exercises with your group. So we address different topics that might come up in your group uh, to, help, to help you move forward and to help you address things that are happening in your group. Um, that's probably the last thing I wanted to throw in there before we yeah. switch over to questions. Yeah. So, I don't know, shall we do it? Questions. So, turn it over to you. Questions, let us know. You could probably unmute, um, right, or raise your hand. Yeah, just show show yourself um, and unmute would be fine. I mean, something that I just want to kick in here, you know, is because Practice groups tend to have the same problems over and over again. It's not like there's a super wide variety of them. It doesn't make them any less painful. Uh, but it's really cool when you can find out what's going on and figure out what to do about it without having to reinvent the wheel. And that's a big part of what we do, like to help troubleshoot. Uh, you know, things like somebody wants to do something, bring something some expertise that they have, they want to start bringing that to the group. Uh, you know, maybe they're, they want to start doing focusing in the group or, or doing some yoga or uh, kind of like that. Um, or they want to do uh, some astrology or uh, um, anything like that. Uh, and or they want to do more empathy, or they just want to do exercises, or they just, you know, all these different things that happen in groups that tend to happen over and over again and often have the same solutions. Um, so, yeah, kind of stuff like that. Um, I know it just feels great when we finish those calls and we know that somebody's gonna, you know, kind of have a, a new way of coping. Uh, so like that. All right, Jessica, I think I see your hand up. Yeah, hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, I've been late. Uh, I was late. Uh, I missed uh, the first, uh, I'd say, 20 minutes uh, of the call. And uh, um, so this year, I, I am in the uh, OF track. Um, I'm curious what's the difference between OF and the mentor track. I understand it's a separate track. It can be separate. Mm -hmm. Cool. First of all, we conjured you here, Jessica, um, because we were like, we really need somebody who's been in the OF. You know, like, 
don't believe us, <laughs> you know, like talk to somebody who's been in it. And we were like, ah, who, we, who can we call? So I willed you in here, Jessica, thank you. Um, <laughs> and if you're willing, if, so if you have a question for Jessica, uh, are, you, are you okay with that, Jessica? Yeah. To take a question if somebody else? Okay, yeah. I'm gonna answer yours too. Um, the, the, the mentoring is similar, right? Except it's a different subject. It's a, it's a slightly different subject in that it's a different format. We're now not talking about leading group exercises and following as a group, we're now talking about very one-on-one -on -one work. Mm. Okay, so that is does take a different set of skills. And in fact, a lot of empathy and a lot of self-empathy too um, that helps us. So part of what we want to look at is, you know, kind of the technical aspects of you know where somebody might be at and why they may be having problems like there are ways to recognize when somebody's not getting enough empathy you're like i know that i know that you're doing the exercise and it's not working but you're doing exactly doing the exercise why isn't it working it's because i'm not connected to the to the needs i'm not getting enough empathy in order to have a meaningful relationship with that exercise and so we find these things mm -hmm. um, anyway. So that's something that you can really work on one on one. The other thing is that we can help people do very specific work in their own for their own life. So it can accelerate or deepen the learning process because you're like, you know, well, there's a couple things. Number one, we can help manage their relationship to the work. Like when I'm mentoring, the first thing I'm going to tell somebody is, let's not go into the Super Bowl tomorrow because we learned to play football today. So if if we want to, uh, if part of our goal is to use this with our family, that's a long term goal. That's not something right. And we want to keep that perspective. That's why it's important, I think, that you've done the COC. It's more important that you know the specifics and even the byproducts of the work itself. Uh, and you have that if you've done the COC. You don't really necessarily need that to facilitate a practice group because that's kind of built in. And we, you know, as you know, you've been in the meetings, we, we kind of help you get ready so that that's all mm -hmm. set up. We can't necessarily do that for mentoring. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, when you bring something, yeah, of course, we can work with that, uh, but it's going to be different. Mentoring is a slightly different animal. And uh, yeah, so that's why we did two different programs. And we want to make it so that, you know, some people love one on one. Some people prefer groups. So we wanted to expand the, the you know, our ecosystem. But we wanted to do it with a certain level of quality control. Uh, and that's what the COC gives us. And we're not again, we're not doing it as a blessing or a, an analysis or anything like that. We're just going, yep, you did it. Cool. Thank you. And also, um, it, it sounds like a so mentor mentor program will have uh, its own like a monthly meeting separate yes. from. Correct. Okay. And yeah. its own directory. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, cool. Cool. <laughs> so I, I know that it, you offer like the combined uh, track, <laughs> then there'll be like a two both both track work and the both. Track yes, you can do. Things. And we even we only charge you for one. We if you notice the pricing, we don't charge you twice for being in the course. If you do both of them at once, we were very careful about that. Um, okay. But yeah, so um, yeah, so you get two completely different sets of services. Okay. Cool. It's not it's not a duplication of services. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um yeah. Um I, I'm ready to ask some questions here. First of all, I wanted to uh thank um thank Jessica for that that question because that question was in my head too and it was nice to hear the answer to that. Um I guess I'm here on this telecon to, to answer two questions for myself. And um, the first one is, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very sold on the concept. I'm very sold on the community. Um, 
But my question is, can I add this to my plate this year? <laughs> and um, so I've I've been in in uh, similar communities for uh, a total of four years. First, the first two two years was back in 2014, 2015, when I did Marshall Rosenberg's workbook with a group. It was based off a workshop that I attended and then I, there were a number of interested parties that kept going with it. And I kept going with that in two years in two groups. And the second year I was kind of the facilitator for the group. So it was working through, I think it was Lucy Liu's work, work, workbook with Marshall Rosenberg stuff. And then I sort of left that behind when I, I moved physically to another place and had a lot of upheaval in my life and left it behind and felt like I missed it. And that's when I reconnected two years ago with, with this group, which was really helpful to me. Um, I think that there's a lot of value added in, in what Tom's doing and extending on Marshall's work. And I, I love that. I've just learned so much new things and crystallized my ideas of that. And in this capacity, this is a kind of a little neat little story here. Um, so I was already enrolled in the group two years ago and had started doing the course, this particular course for the first time when I was in a group that had a leader in Greece that was online and a couple weeks in the course, I connected with somebody that was in the next town over that was doing it <laughs> through this lady in Greece. And it was like, hey, we're right next to each other. And she had already started meeting in person with a small group in the next town over. And so I was doing the course and then I joined her group. So I was doing the in-person thing too. And so I was in multiple groups <laughs> at the same time. And then the second year, this same local group is meeting again, um, but the one that was facilitating dropped out. So I'm already facilitating. And then this year I also added the certificate of completion part of that. And I had it in my head that I eventually wanted to do the facilitation part to learn from other facilitators. However, I just, I, I have this feeling that with all the things going on in my, my family, there's just some major, major things all happening at once that it just feels like it might be just a little too much to take on this year. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a little worried about that. Um, and that it's, it's, I'm finding it, there's a little ironic thought popped through my head and sometimes the best way to practice is not to practice. <laughs> um, right, I mean, it's like if you're gonna put yourself out of a, out of a zone where you're taking care of yourself, um, then that might not really work, right? So it could be, um, and I have no idea about your details, but I do know this, your body will tell you when you're ready and it'll tell you if you're not. And sometimes it's cool because when it tells you you're not, it doesn't mean you're not gonna do it, it just means that there's something in the way and we wanna look at that. Now we might decide we're not going to but I love that process. So when you're saying, you know, I'm not sure, I'm just going to make a wild guess here that there's a certain physicality to that for you. That it, you don't feel easy, right? You don't feel comfortable when you think about doing that. And so I'm just, well, first of all, high five that you're, you know, you're referencing yourself there, you know? And, and the other thing is that you know, you have a way of finding out if this is good for you or not. Um, and then, it, so my suggestion is, even though you didn't ask for it, uh, would be to keep feeling your body. And until your body goes, yeah, I agree. Um, or I don't agree. And, you know, I must not know what the answer. I don't know why my body disagrees, but it's something, right? Because it's saying something. It doesn't make stuff up. So it just means for me, it means I need more empathy. That's all, I, you know. Um, and so there is a process here for you. I mean, because I'm hearing, that, I mean, what you're bringing here is that I don't know yet. 
you know, and so what I'm going to suggest is there's a great way to find out. And that is to just keep giving yourself empathy and keep feeling your body. It's, it's hard to think that, though, I, you know, because it's a year long thing, I might have to wait for a whole nother year and I might be ready sometime during the year. But it just, you know, doesn't sink. Well, I guess on. what? You can start a practice group later in the year. That's the beauty of having a matriculated course. We're all on the same page, literally, right? And so if you decide you want to start practicing halfway through the year, because you're not going to start at the beginning, you're going to converge with the community. I and there might be people out there who are like six months in, I think I'm ready to be in a practice group. Yeah. Yeah, that we, we kind of dealt with it in our, our group. Um, in that first year, there were people that um, we sort of have a, a walking group and we do it after the walking group. And some of the people that were doing the walking that would drop in were curious about the uh, what was going on afterwards. And we right. tried to be welcoming about it. Um, but the other hand, it was a little jarring for some of the members that um, you know, there were things that they didn't necessarily feel comfortable sharing with strangers in the middle of it. And then we had other members that were a little bit confused because it was dropping into the middle of the year and they didn't understand a lot of the basics. So it was almost like we would either have to redo the meeting to just do a basic introduction. Yeah, there's no start. winning. There's yeah. no winning there, by the way. The winning <laughs> is the winning is making sure you have the right people in your room wherever that room is, even if it's here on your computer. Um, and what I mean by that is, is that um, uh, you're gonna, you, you all, you demonstrate it to yourself, right? Like if somebody's not, if somebody hasn't gone through the relationship with my needs and feelings part of the course, if you've gone through, if you haven't gone through that and somebody throws you into an empathy session with somebody who has gone through that and somebody's ready to like, hey, I don't, I'm, I'm all about finding my needs. I, there's nothing embarrassing about them. There's nothing I need to hide. There's, you know, this is, let's get going, right? But that's because of my relationship and that's what the course does, right? It very incrementally gives us that relationship. So you can't just skip. I mean, you can, but you see what happens. Um, and so that's a place where I, it's just, you can't be in two places at once, right? Um, I mean, unless you choose two different times, of course, then you could do that, but um, yeah. So again, that's, you know, what that reflects why we do what we do in terms of this, you know, rigid, whatever you want to call it, matriculation that we do. So, Thank you for that that feedback. That was helpful to listen to you. Think that helped me think that through, I guess. Um, but I, I had one other concern and question that I wanted to address here, and that is that um, I sort of had it in my head a general sense of, oh yes, I like to keep going with this this group that we have that's in person. And I would like to do some kind of feeder workshops out in the community to maybe help feed this group. Or, you know, I don't I don't know how that'll pan out exactly, but I had it in my head that it would be really nice to just yeah. go into the local high school and get some younger people involved because our group is on the old yeah. end. And but there's problems with that in that it doesn't the school year doesn't map to the the, the year, you know, because they're out of session when we, when right. we start a new year here. Yeah. And I was just wondering if people in There's this thing are work yeah. through that. Yeah. There's two things there. Uh, first of all, the problem with any rolling group is that you're only going to be able to be as deep as your lowest common denominator. Either that or somebody's bored, right? And, and with that, rather, people are bored or they're over their head and they don't know what's happening. So when you, that's what happens when you have a rolling group and you keep in reintroducing people. Now, I did the Lucy Lou thing 
Uh, that's how I learned it, in fact, in the beginning. We just went through Marshall's book with Lucy Liu's workbook. That stops after week 10. This is a 52-week course. So what's not in those books is 40 weeks worth of progress. And by the way, which I do give Lucy Liu credit for, because she created another document that talked about a lot of these distinctions that are the daughters of the consciousness, I'll call it. Um, so kind of like that. Um, so that's something that is kind of built into how we've devised the course for better or for worse. Um, now what we do like, oh, that, so, so that's the first part. The second thing is that I'm going to assume that Lori, you actually want this work. You want to learn the work. You consciously seek ways to learn it. Correct. I do. Yes. Okay. And on a scale of one to 10, how difficult would you say it is to incorporate? Uh, to incorporate what? Into your life, just to like really learn it and get it going. Um, I would say it's pretty difficult for me. I, I came from a military engineering community that sort of tamps a lot of this stuff down. Yep. You know, culturally. So yeah. it's a big, it's a big shift. It's, it's not necessarily easy work for me. Thank you. Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And which, which tells me you've actually done the work because that's what everybody says once they've done the work. Wow, this is hard, right? And so, and, and the reason I'm going through all this, I'm not, I'm not trying to set you up at all. I'm, I'm th th thank you, by the way, for just playing along with me. And that is that if you don't want to learn this, how hard do you think it is? It's like, yeah. <laughs> it's, gone, it's a goner. You're a goner. You're not going to learn it. We want to learn it and it's hard. If you don't want to learn it, I call it impossible. And so as much as I would love the whole world, right, to, to learn this, I kind of wait. I'm, I kind of have to just wait for them to be ready. Now, that means, it doesn't mean that I keep it a secret. We do intros, right? We do first Mondays. We do, uh, Antonio does the, the art and science of, uh, of getting along. I mean, we have these intros that we do, which are very important because some people are ready, they just don't know about it. So I find that to be really helpful, but I wouldn't want to ask people to come back and do rolling, rolling intros. So what you do is we use intros to find the people and then we have to matriculate them from there, right? Keep them busy, keep them learning. So, um, but that usually means you're, that, that, that kind of eliminates the whole rolling group thing because otherwise you end up with this mix that puts you at odds. So you have, especially if there are people that don't even want to learn to work. And I've, you know, I've done enough workshops when I know which spouse brought the other spouse, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And so, so yeah. is, is this facilitator group, this facilitator track, does it support the workshop kind of thing, intro kind of thing or not at all? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's, we support you in your pursuit of learning to share the work. So that can take all sorts of forms. This is what, I mean, you can go do your own practice group off anywhere, you know, it's just that we're, it's not gonna be part of our program, right? Um, our program is just designed as like, you know, we've been talking about this very specific solid thing that you could be part of. Whereas if you wanted to go do intros, and by the way, uh, happy to help you do intros. We, uh, we have recordings we'll give you, uh, you know, we have a very specific way of doing intros too, for that matter. You know, like there's a certain order at which we talk about things. You know, like you start out, where do you start? What is, what's the first thing you say to somebody when you're trying to introduce them to this work? What is the, what are the first words gonna be out of your mouth? 
And then what are you going to say after that? And after that and after that. So how do we lead people in a way that provides a huge shift in perspective in a relatively short period of time? So we call that first Mondays. I mean, we have been working on that for literally decades now. Um, and so you're more than welcome to, you know, just send an email into course coordinator and we'll shoot you a copy or a link. And um, I think we have outlines too and several recordings. And so um, happy to support you in that or any endeavor you have, frankly. Okay, thank you. You have answered my question. Cool. My questions. I appreciate that. All right, Marta. I think I see Marta, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I have a question um, regarding what, how to address the material. And uh, basically, I've been in, in a practice group last year and also this year. And both times my experience has been that it's extremely, it's a lot of material. It, both, both groups were bi-weekly. So it was either two or three weeks for each meeting. And it seemed way too much to go over. Absolutely. And, and so what I would really like to do is to go deeper. It, let, uh, you know, I'm kind of fantasizing about what, how would I like to do a group? Uh, and, and, and I really would like to just focus on, let's say, the first week that we have not done, meaning if, if there were two emails since our last meeting, I would do, the, I would do only the first one. Or even if there were three, meeting, three emails, I would do only the first one. And that would help going deeper into one exercise or maybe two exercises if there were multiple in, in that email, but not trying to cover everything uh, because it just feels like to me that a, lot, possible. a lot more progress is possible when we dive in, when we dig into one thing yeah so i'm wondering if that's in line with well, doing maybe. the facilitator track I, or... it could be it could be um so that... it's not a requirement right. to do every week in the group so here's the difference if people are going there and let's say and this happens by the way they're not going to open a single email they're not going to do anything they're just going to wait for the group and they figure they'll just square it all away that night. It's not going to work. So your plan would work, provided that everybody actually did the work of the course, right? For that matter, you could do any week, any time, right? And, and provided that everybody was still matriculating with the course, they could show up and theoretically do the work we'd be able to jump right in, do the exercises together, um, read the story, you know, talk about whatever. Um, so um, that works, but you need some real discipline. Right. And self I need dedicated people. Yep. And, and I'm also, I'm thinking that I would want to limit the number of participants to a rather small number like, you know, some groups say maximum 15 people, maximum 10, I'm thinking five or six, so that there could be a real discussion yeah. and a real kind of, not yeah. even a sense of community, but more like a sense of, I don't know, there's a lot yeah. more connection. I mean, also my experience is that I really enjoyed those group meetings where the number of participants were very, very low yeah. because for some reason people didn't show up and there were uh, only you have... three of us or four of us. Yeah, Those were the most productive meetings of course. for me. Yeah, well, it, there's a, a, a like a formula, really, which is 
the more people, the less self-expression. End right. of story. So if, you know, you'll get the most with two people, right? Yeah. You get 50%. If you got 20 people in there, there's no way you're getting those levels of self-expression. Right. Which, you know, depending on how you're valuing that in the training, you know, could be really important. So, by the way, um, a number that I found really works, I'm just going to throw this out there, if you want a small group, is seven. Uh, because that way, six people will show up on average. And then you can do threes and twos. To, you can do breakouts of triads, which sometimes you want to do triads uh, because you don't want that kind of, especially when you're doing anger, it's just very important to have three people there when you're doing anger so it, it, we can keep it from going, uh, like becoming scary. Um, so, and then twos, because it's wonderful to be able to do breakouts. Like if you, I, I, I all my practice groups have always included at least a few minutes of empathy, certainly after week 10, um, you know, at the end of the evening, just even if it's just five and five uh, to, you know, do a little exchange. And the other thing is that, I mean, the course very clearly kind of says, look, if you want to do this, you need an empathy buddy. And if you're going to have an empathy buddy, that means you're going to have to spend time with your empathy buddy. It's not just something you write down on paper. And so that's another thing uh, that will contribute or not to the success of any group is what, you know, are they, once you get past a certain week in, in the course, if you don't have an empathy practice, it's just going to stop making sense. Or yeah. you'll try it and you'll be like, that doesn't work. So again, that's something else you want to pay attention to, right? Um, yeah. and, and in fact, I'm adamant about it because I don't want you to waste your time trying to do something you can't do because you don't have enough empathy. So again, all these things, like if Marta, I mean, if you have a grip on those, I'm imagining you, you could coordinate it beautifully. Thank but you. you'd have to have the right people. And if you want yeah. a small number, that's even easier. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely, I can't see myself leading a group for 15 people and like, you know, maybe down the road three years from now, but as a start, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever works. Okay. I mean, you I know, guess I know maybe some folks will only work with one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, actually, uh, I, I signed up for the certificate of completion and my target is the mentorship the year after. And, and even, you know, a, a small group is almost like a mentorship. Well, Not quite, but, but it's more aligned with it than a big group. So well, the dynamic for sure can, can you get there, right? Because of all the self-expression. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. I mean, you. it's also probably worth, I think we kind of mentioned it, but everyone can choose the size of their groups, how often they meet, when the group starts, when the group ends. This is something that we don't necessarily manage. And, and I, like, I think that's something so important to put out there because I think oftentimes in the world of like, I'm going to do something inside of a course or inside of a school, there's, there's a, there are parameters you're supposed to, and you have to follow along and you have to do a group throughout the whole year, but it's very different here um, where we're turning that power over to you and you choose what you're charging when you do it, when you don't do it and, and all that right. stuff. So that um, inside the agreement, by the way, exactly. Now we're sticking to the course. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just to put that out there. Yeah. Well, and that's important for us because, you know, a big part of this course is accessibility. And if we have to get involved, all of a sudden we're bogged down. So what we want to do is learn to do things that are more scalable. That was, that's the very uh, basis of the course to, uh, of its, of its Genesis really. And so we want to stick with that and we can say, here we are going 11 years and, um, nobody has been turned down ever for lack of funds in 11 years.
I think we're closer to 40,000, by the way, um, these days. But um, it works um, the way we're doing it so far. It's been working. And part of that is the scalability of it, right? And so part of that is giving you the responsibility. And you're so much better equipped than we are to figure out what your community needs, you know? Why, why would we, you know? So again, the, the thing that's important to us is the work. And so that's why we're, we're really into the agreement. Um, and as long as that happens, we are, you know, we're moving and grooving. Jaya, long time no see. <laughs> oh, you're muted. You're muted. Here we go. You have to unmute. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. So I said I decided to show up and read all the agreements as you had suggested. Hmm. And I was wondering if it's going to help uh, to share with others uh, what how we were facing the problems we faced in India with no Zoom at times, no internet. Mm -hmm. And yet the craving for uh, this course was... Uh, deeply felt because people wanted the practice and the ones who were exposed to it never really dropped out. I mean, we've had to take a, a special class in between for them to, in case they had dropped off for some reason, to update them so that they could follow the course of, uh, completely. And this is my third time that I'm doing this. And without your permission, because I just couldn't get through to you, as you know, what we did was uh, I, I run a course, uh, which is really an overview of uh, Marshall's uh, NVC, which runs over three months. And people who do it twice over uh, were looking for practice and we found thumb. I, I mean, I, we suggested that they do the thumb on course. And uh, a lot of people could uh, register, but a whole lot of them could not register because they don't have a Zoom connectivity or something or the other. And we were doing it in-house and I was looking for another way of trying to get through to you. So one of my queries is how do these people who, who are participating, who want to participate, how do they pay you? They really want to pay you. They want to give something back to you because they've found a shift in them. They, they really love it and they keep coming back. So what is the other way of, you know, getting them to give you uh, their gift of, you know, contributing to what you've done for them? Um, Antonio, I think you've been working with, doesn't PayPal have some kind of uh, new international function that we haven't been playing with yet? Or how does that work? Was there a link? What was the name of that, first of all? There's a product that was inside of PayPal, like Spark or- Yeah, I think it's called Zoom, Boom. X O O M. There it is, yes. that's the one. Yeah, so that might work, X O O M is an app. And then they can just send, right, donations. Oh, we have a donations. So PayPal does not function there or does? It does. It does. Uh, maybe I have to do it for them. They will not okay. be able to do it. Well, there's donate buttons. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think we have donate buttons, although we should probably, we have to pay attention to that one um, because I'm not sure if Rick yeah. is um, online with that. Um, yeah. So we, the, I mean, we could just, I think you can just send it to nycnvc.org. That's the, uh, that's the, um, okay. That's the uh, the um, PayPal account. Right. So you can just send it All through right. email that way. Um, there is something else that we're kind of jazzed about that we were talking about just earlier. Antonio has come across a, a new product that's got our minds blown. And that is, if it, I don't know if you, you know, if you want, like you have these subtitles here. Um, mm -hmm. 
right? Well, what if those subtitles could be in almost any language you could um, imagine? Hmm. But it doesn't work, Tom. We've tried it. It didn't. That. Yeah. What? But when? I'll tell you why. Because hmm. what's what's happened is, uh, and by the way, we are constantly revisiting. Just because it literally it could not work six months ago and then work today. That's how fast hmm. technology goes. And mm -hmm. one big shift that happened, and I'm not saying, by the way, it's flawless or anything like that, mm -hmm. uh, but the way the system is set up, you can fix it. Uh, in other words, it, it'll run it by in an editable window so that you can very easily make cor corrections as you're going through the, um, the video. Uh, but the other thing is that translation programs stopped trying to learn words. They don't learn words anymore. They don't know any languages, translation programs. What they mm -hmm. do know is patterns. And so they recognize literally the patterns underneath language that create language. That's what AIs do. And that's what they call machine translation. And it is much better than what we used to do by trying to match up words and put them inside of a syntax program. This is just blows that away. And so and the reason I know this is because I watched Antonio's face as he was looking at the Spanish translation. Do you have, do you have that right now? Is there something? Think, do can we? Yeah, right I don't know. Can we? See. You want to try it in Hindi? Um, yes, I want to see. It or in we Hindi could try it. Work. We could try it in simple Chinese. I don't know if that's there either, but um, yeah, I can give you the link because I know that we already hit our limit and we're uh, okay working on getting a plan. But I'll put the link in the perfect. Chat. You can put that in the chat. Um, but you know, it is funny that technology just gets that much better, that much faster. So we're always on the lookout. And the other question that I had was, is, uh, the compassion cost thinking of having it twice a year, because, uh, that would be really helpful for a lot of people who are doing the power words or other sessions, you know, which is an overview of NVC and then they want yeah. to go into the practice, uh, uh December course can be again. Uh, yeah, I mean, some of the languages are doing that. I believe you're doing that as well, right? Or even more than that. Um, and so that's part of when we're getting into the other, the other languages besides the English course, there's a lot of leeway, you know, depending on what culture it's in, when the holidays are, you know, things like that um, are pretty important in terms of scheduling. You know, it's like completely different in like the Middle East than it is in South America. Uh, you know, we've got festival of, or, you know, do we have Ramadan or, you know, so all these things happen at all different times. And so we're constantly adapting to whatever. Uh, and for that matter, even learning styles change from culture to culture. So uh, Arabic speakers tend to learn much better one on one than in, in self-study or in group situations. Why? Because that's what the culture has, you know, in, engendered. Um, so it's funny, we're all different, you know, there's, I don't know how many different Spanishes there are, you know, but there's all these different things that, uh, you know, we're paying attention to. So I would say in terms of the English course, we are just very recently trying on the idea of doubling our workload which is literally what will happen uh, if we do it twice a year. And we really want to look at that because at once a year, it's quite a workload. Um, so it is a thought, uh, but we'll see uh, how that works. This, it's, there's no answer, by the way. <laughs> there's no right answer. You know, uh, we don't really know if maybe we're, there could be some way we're doing it better. We just don't know what it is, right? Uh, but um, the thing that I just noticed is I, this whole going together for a year, like traveling together for a year is so powerful. Uh, it's just so powerful. Um, I don't want to, I'm hesitant to give that up. Yeah. Um, so who knows? Um, we hadn't taken your permission, but we have done this, uh, like we've staggered the courses uh, yeah, for people you were who join later. Uh, but it is, they follow from the first to the last because otherwise exactly. it would hold no sense for them. 
Yeah. And uh, and I have to make sure that people who insist on coming in between, they know what has happened before. So I take right. them through the whole thing so that they know where they are and they can participate fully. And right. what are the max that I have been able to do is uh, I try to re-register them for the next year so that at least they can hear you when you have those sessions come up and you take those special uh, sessions. It's mm -hmm. very important for them to do that. So they re-register and they do that. So it's it's absolutely fine. We can do that as long as we have your permission to kind of stagger some of these courses. People yeah. pay up through PayPal well, and uh, yes. then they can come back later on to, you know, follow your year course because you, you need to do them twice over. I mean, people who really wish to learn, they are oh, doing yeah. it twice over and thrice over. There's not just once and you're done. I, I'm not so done. Much of practice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I I see a lot of possibilities even with that one course because uh, people can yeah. just join next yeah. year. And, and you know, one of my favorite sets of words is whatever works. And in fact, I've learned to replace good and evil <laughs> with it works or it doesn't work. And I love looking at the world that way. And, you know, when we talked last and you know i said well but what about the sense of community that we get right doing this journey together and you're like yeah we got that you know and what about you know the matriculation and you're like no we've got that so it's like it works it works it doesn't matter what it looks like it just matters that it works and so uh yeah i, I was very happy about that and i was like wow good on you i mean 12 you know whatever i think you were talking about doing the monthly it's like that's a lot of work um, yes but anyway so yeah appreciating that so thank you i hope that helped with your concerns yes. and i did i did get um uh i have an email which i haven't read yet from dipti so i'm looking forward to that yes. thank you yeah and jaya by the way is uh you know just for is working in Hindi. We're trying to bring, uh, there's a few folks that speak Hindi out there. In so. fact, a lot of people all over the world speak in Hindi. And I'm sure once the translation is through, you will find a lot of people outside India as yeah. well looking for a Hindi uh, transcript yeah. of this. Yeah, I was joking. I mean, there, are, I probably, I don't know how many people speak Hindi, but I know it's a lot. <laughs> I could find out. Hold on a second. So there's only 600 million people that speak Hindi. <laughs> and it's interesting, as you said, only three... 340 are, are native speakers. Uh, so the rest, the other 260, I guess it's a second, at least a second language. Wow. I just, I have to say it's one of the great things about participating in this community is that I find it very heartwarming that so many countries are involved in this work. I really do. I, you know, each and every time I hear from somebody like Jaya, I just, it makes me so hopeful <laughs> that we're all learning this together, even though we have lots of different cultures. It's just lovely. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. And I, and I people gotta- love, People yeah. love Thumb Bond. I mean, uh, I, there will be videos that I'm going to uh, um, share with Tom later on. There's so many people who love Tom Bond. They, they won't be able to understand when he speaks to them, but they know when, whenever we, uh, you know, facilitate these courses, we say Tom said this and Tom said that. So they really are so grateful to you. So I'm going to share those videos uh, whenever we are ready with them. Okay. Yeah, that was a big thing for us. You know, especially Americans tend to think that the world ends at the oceans. And so we were really happy to just keep it going. Um, and it really, we did, we're still not in Antarctica. That's our big failure. Um, we have not made it. I think we almost had somebody there, but anyway, um, it's so important. I mean, there's a lot of people on this planet and 
every you know part of this whole idea that all everybody's needs matter would mean that you really wouldn't stop doing what we do until everybody knew about this like that's that's when we'll hang up our boots right that's when we'll say yeah we're done now everybody knows the work so that's just going to keep going and i i love technology i mean technology can be really life serving uh if properly you know like applied and, and so i just love what we're about to do which you know laurie just to your point there's going to be a lot more a lot more people from a lot more places involved in the coming year because of this technology um, we're going to be able to deliver the course where there's nobody nobody speaks the language uh nobody speaks english rather um and still be able to get a pretty good version of the course over there. So, um, and then it really gets tuned up when we have editors, then it really gets wonderful. Um, I just want to check in. I know we're at 90 minutes. So. Oh, thank you. Cool. All right. Well, I think we might've covered all the grounds and then some. Yeah, I think so. And look, if something pops up, you know, just write in. Yeah. Questions. Yeah. So. Um, cool. Cool. All right. So maybe we'll start wrapping up. Um, again, um, let us know if there's any questions that come up along the way. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your questions. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, again, for anyone who was here also before, uh, who is an organizer facilitator, um, you know, thank you for being here as well. I mean, I know Jessica has definitely been on her. Uh, on the track there. So thanks for joining us. Cool. All right. And you, so we're good. We're all wrapped up. Yes. I just have a question. When would the new round of facilitators start meeting? Like when? Uh, the first meeting happens in June, right before the course begins. Just before the course starts. We get all grounded and ready to go. And the directory goes, uh, starts, we published the directory in May 23rd. 23rd, I think. Yeah. All right. Nice work, Brain. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, Doreen had something. Did you have a, did I see your finger go up, Doreen? I was just going to point out that Lorelei had a question. Oh. Lorelei. Oh, so apparently we got that question. All right. Wow, I'm having a little time slip here, but okay, good. <laughs> all right, so we're all squared away then, yes? Going once, going twice. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for being here. Thanks Thank for you. being here.